everyone. Welcome to Flowers in Your Hair. My name is Somni. Growing up, I used to see makeup as another accessory that you use to complete or emphasize your wardrobe. It had the same equivalents as shoes, purses, and hair accessories, to name a few. But I ended up learning one name and this person completely changed the way that I saw makeup and this person is Kevin O'Quinn he inspired me to see makeup not as an accessory but as a form of art recently I saw a documentary film called Larger Than Life the Kevin O'Quinn story If you love makeup, history, and inspirational stories, I highly recommend that you watch this film. I learned about Kevin O'Quinn in the 90s, which was a decade when I used to read a lot of fashion magazines. I would pretty much devour every page, read every available text, even the um, advertisement. It was something that I truly enjoyed to read. And there was one article, and I think it might have been in Flair magazine, that was written by Jeannie Becker. At the time, she was the host of fashion television. And in this article, she was interviewing him. And there were two things that stood out to me. And these are the reasons why I became so interested in him. She mentioned in the article that while she was talking to him, he asked her to do her makeup, which of course she said yes to. And he asked her to lie down, which was an unusual request. But he had explained to her that that was the uh, best position because your face is resting and it's easier to apply the makeup. Now, this concept of lying down or at least reclining on a chair, you see this in the uh, documentary, which was so cool to see because one thing is to read about it and the other one is to see it. And the second thing was after he finished the application, they took some Polaroid pictures, which she shared in the article. And she had said that she was completely stunned by the transformation because it looked like her, but at the same time, it didn't look like her. It's almost as if to say it was a better version of herself. But it wasn't because she was wearing a superficial mask made of makeup. It was something more. Kevin O'Quinn was known for his transformations, not only from the uh, beauty aspect, but also because he would take a person and transform them into a different character. And further into the video, I'll show you a few examples of what I mean. Even though Jeannie Becker had written this article so beautifully, she had expressed her admiration for his talent. I have to say that watching the film, I was finally able to understand visually what she was trying to put into words. Kevin didn't follow the rules of makeup. He was a trendsetter. And I think what made him a master at his craft was not just the skills that he nurtured. He wasn't just painting your face. He was painting your soul. And it was your inner beauty that he was bringing out to the surface for everyone to see. It's almost as if to say, for example, I have brown eyes, these are the shapes of my eyebrows, these are my cheekbones and the color of my skin tone. These are all technicalities. But if you look at this canvas, what else do you see beyond the physical? 
Are the eyes mysterious? Are they inquisitive? Are they full of curiosity? So from a technical point of view, you can say, oh, these colors would go really nice on a pair of brown eyes. But ask yourself, when you see the person and you are familiar with their personality, what colors then go with these eyes? I think this is the reason why he created so many memorable looks in the 90s and that's because each look was very different from the other and that's because no personality is the same and what makes me think that it was the personality well not only because this is something that you see in the film but you also see it in one of his books. Kevin O'Quinn was one of the uh, first makeup artists to publish makeup books to talk about techniques. And in Face Forward, and I am going to show you some images because the book, as you'll see, it's very large and it doesn't fit in the frame. So this picture here, you see Michelle Pfeiffer, Jodie Foster, and Meg Ryan. And he says, and I quote, I chose to use the same makeup concept and colors on all three. This had an equalizing effect and yet still allowed their individuality to shine through. And also in the book, it indicates that this um, photograph was for Vanity Fair magazine. I remember when I bought this book a long time ago and I was looking at the pictures. When I first saw this photograph, I thought that each one had a completely different color from the other. And so again, it is the personality that is making it look different. And here are some other favorite examples of mine. Can you recognize who is portraying as Veronica Link? Well, it's Martha Stewart. And what about this stunning angel? Well, that's Sharon Stone. So again, he had an amazing gift. And through these uh, photographs and the other bodies of work that he left behind, you see how he took makeup to the next level because it wasn't just about everyday beauty or a look that you can take to work or a look that you can wear to a party. It was much more. It was another creative tool that you could use to create a different character that went with your personality. Another tool that you could use just to have fun with. The way that you use a camera to capture nature scenes or your favorite people. He really made you see makeup in a whole new way. And you can truly appreciate the collaboration between makeup artist and singer or actress and model. You see the fun that they're having and it's just, it's something that you really have to see for yourself. It's, it's fascinating. And throughout the film, I got to appreciate more and more one of his uh, famous quotes, which is, no amount of makeup can mask an ugly heart. And again, that quote really drives that message home of he wasn't using makeup just to emphasize your features or to hide imperfections. He was using it to emphasize your inner beauty that went along with your physical attributes. It's like he brought all of them together into one. And when you watch this uh, film, I think you will have a different appreciation about makeup, the skill that it takes to create those looks. It is fascinating. And if you watch this documentary film, please let me know what you thought in the comments below. 
I'm really looking forward to hear what you uh, take away from it. And in the meantime, let's all grab our makeup brushes and connect with our inner selves. And let's see what looks we can create. Again, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. I just realized that I almost broke my promise to you, which was to show you the book. As you can see, it is pretty large. And as I was flipping through the pages, I realized that makeup artistry is one of those few art forms that does not last. And I think this is the reason why when you're wearing an excellent makeup application, we take so many pictures and so many close-ups because you know that it'll be gone within 24 hours. One of the things that Kevin O'Quinn said that for me it's pretty memorable and it inspired me to keep practicing my makeup application. He said, if you don't like how it looks, don't worry about it. Just wash it off and start over. That's one of the reasons why makeup is so precious as an art form. Because for one day, we get to be a form of art.